People, 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 welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show. You guys already know who it is, man. I am here. The trip is over, guys. Um, oh, man, again, I um, the last time I actually talked about it was, of course, uh, me trying to look for food and whatnot. But before I ended up looking for food, I met a remarkable individual, and her name was Esther. Now, Esther, man, I'm trying to check right now to see if this goddamn plane is over here. But anyways, um, I'm actually at the airport right now. But Esther, she had a remarkable story, and it made me realize just how grateful I am for the circumstances I've been able to come up in. I didn't have, uh, you know, I didn't have the problems that, of course, other people have. And, of course, we can't compare each other's problems, but to see a human being be so grateful, especially after all of the things they've endured, including myself. But the thing is, my scale and what has happened with me is nowhere near on the square, on the scale other people have gone through. Is that my plan? I don't know what's going on right now. This dude doesn't know where he's going. But anyways, um, so I met this individual so, so, so grateful. We were talking through, of course, the chat app. And then uh, I ended up going on search for some food. I ended up going into a vegan shop. I was like, man, what the hell is this? And then, of course, after that vegan shop, I kept walking. I was like, man, I need to get some more food. Because, honestly, right when I come outside the hotel, there's nothing but just... There's nothing but just dry seafood everywhere. You know what? It's even difficult to get cold water out there. I went to these shops. They were like, hey, you know what? If you want ice in your drink for three cubes, you're going to have to pay like 50 cents. I mean, and it's not the money. It's the principle. You're literally going to charge me for you're going to charge me almost one dollar for three cubes of ice. Man, I couldn't believe it. So anyways, um, man, I'm checking to see right now if the airplane's over there. But yeah, so uh, <laughs> I'm just making sure, man, because uh, the weather is actually not too good right now, but it is beautiful. Um, so anyways, I went on this journey. I ended up getting a nice little power nap in, and then Esther came, uh, came up to meet me, and then we were just chatting it up all evening. We went to this Chinese restaurant, and one thing I actually talked about, especially in my YouTube video uh, that I'm actually going to put on this blog, so if you guys want to check that out too, just to get a nice little snippet of what Hong Kong looks like, you can, the Arsenio Buck Show. Dot com. But, um, or of course, oh my God, I can't believe she's wearing that. She is so bad. See, sometimes I just feel like the pro- the provocation of a uh, of some women. I just like you can you like seriously. You're going to travel exactly like that. Ugh. Anyways, so here we go. Who cares about that circle of concern? But man, we went to this Chinese restaurant. I'm so interested hearing how like Hong Kong people, Hong Kong knees, whatever you want to call them, the way they speak to each other. It is a little bit uh. It's a little bit wild, to say the least, um, because it just seems like they're screaming at each other, but they're really not. And then the way, and of course, the vowels and the way, of course, Cantonese sounds and everything it just seems like they're arguing with each other 24-7. Another very interesting observation I wish I would have had the opportunity to show you guys is apparently the poor, I wouldn't say the poor laborers, but let's just say the labor workers, as there are in every country, the Mexicans in America, the Cambodians and Burmese out there in Thailand, uh, the migrant workers, of course, out there in England, you name it, they're everywhere, right? But they literally push these dollies up and down the streets everywhere with no shirts on, sweating their asses off. It's crazy. Like, they're all in the way. The car's over here honking them to get off the street. And, man, I just thought it was very, very interesting. But, um, yeah, that was, of course, an observation that I made. Another one, of course, I made was when we were going up the midtown, uh, mid-level escalators and whatnot. I thought it was spectacular because after the Chinese restaurant, I told you that observation in terms of the way they speak to each other. But the mid-level escalators are insane because, God damn, the Hong Kong is just so steep, right? I mean, you've got to, like, you, these people probably have hamstrings and quadriceps of steel because they literally climb up. you got to climb up these damn hills in the, in the middle of the city because, of course, it's built on who knows what this is. But, guys, as I'm looking out right now, man, I'm looking at these green mountains off in the distance and the clouds running right through them. I think it's amazing. And, again... Man, these clouds are getting darker and darker. Oh, boy. It's going to be a little bit bumpy getting out of this place. But um, anyways, maybe it might not be so bumpy in about a couple of hours but or an hour and a half. But yeah, anyways, so when it came down to the mid-level escalators and went to the top of this place, it was like a little colonial thing going on, a little colonial square. And so we went to this cafe. There were some Filipinos working in there. And apparently one of the Filipinos just so, he was a really big guy and his hair looked very... Polynesian. 
So I was looking at him, and I was like, uh, he looks a little Samoan. And then, you know, I was like, dude, this guy looks Samoan. So before we left, I was like, I was like, man, I got to ask him. I was like, hey, man, where are you from? He's like, oh, I'm from the Philippines. I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. And it's funny because right after that, he's like, oh, my dad's half Samoan. I said, God damn it, I knew it. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it because his hair, right? And so I think I just find it so interesting to see uh, people from so many different walks of life and especially Samoans. I love them to death. So, um, yeah, after that, I ended up um, I ended up going to my hotel, of course, you know, meeting Sohair. This, of course, was on day two. Day three, guys, it really, really, really wasn't anything. But what I liked about day three was just across the road, if I go on the other side of the block, I could go across the road and there's a square. Not a square. There's like a little park, right? So there's a recreation center where you can actually do some swimming. And then there was an area of green, basically like a green area, guys throwing footballs around. That, of course, is on some of my videos uh, that I posted on Instagram. And, yeah, there's the harbor. I mean, you see some of the speedboats, the yachts going from one end all the way to Macau, which is another country, of course, has six times the revenue that Vegas has. And, oh, man, it was just remarkable. So after that, met a friend, just a little relaxation day, went out, got some food. I mean, nothing crazy to report, you know, just standing in the middle of Hong Kong. But it kind of sucks. I didn't have the opportunity to do the things that I really, really wanted to do, like go see animals, go to a zoo, stuff like that, because they just don't have that stuff out there in Thailand. And if they do, they charge foreigners more for it. So, guys, I mean, how can I sum up this trip in general? Um, First and foremost, just so grateful for the experience. I mean, when I first came here, it was a little bit ratchet. But, guys, I got to hurry up and talk about what happened today. It was fantastic. The whole transportation. Guys, I'm telling you right now. How can you stretch across three islands, two trains, and 30 minutes, got to the airport, and literally 35 minutes from where I was? The efficiency of Hong Kong is spectacular. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before in my life. Now, Singapore, don't get, don't get me wrong. I'm lo- loving this airport. This airport's number two on my list. Honestly, LAX, I'm a, ugh, You know, the food kind of sucks. Um, uh, yeah, LAX is very open. I'm all about open airports. That's why I love Suwanapum out there in Bangkok. That's why I love this airport. And Singapore Airport is not as open, but honestly, yes, it is. Because they're going to have a fourth terminal coming up. There are garden areas. There are areas of waterfalls, honestly, unstoppable. Singapore is on a planet of its own. But this airport right here, I love it because they knew exactly what they were doing when they first built this airport. Now, let me give you an example. Damn. I love just seeing the planes just take off right before my eyes. So let me give you an example. Here, Bangkok Airport. When you take the airport link, the airport link goes into the basement of the airport. Then you have to do some walking, and then you have to take an elevator or take the escalators all the way to the departure halls, which are four floors above you. Is it inconvenient? Not really. If you're in a hurry, yes, it is. But you never want to be in a hurry when you're going to an an airport, period, okay? (sighs) And with that being said, What I thought was the most amazing thing ever is Hong Kong. Hong Kong knew exactly what they were doing when they built this airport, right? Because the air, the, of course, the train comes right in and right when you step out, of course, it says arrival halls, departure halls and everything. But right when you walk out, you're in the main departure hall. And you know what? When you look behind you, the train is at the bottom. All the vehicles are on top. So I'm talking about the buses, the shuttle buses, the taxis, the everything is on top. That's how convenient it is. Now, let me give you another thing. Cathay Pacific. Maybe it just goes for Cathay Pacific, right? But when I checked into Cathay Pacific, they have like 12 ch- ticketing agents. So there are no hefty lines, okay? And so I think a lot of goddamn countries need to take notice and they really need to figure this out because, man, to have that many ticketing agents and for there to not be any delays was another spectacular feature. Let me give you an example. Don Mung Airport, which is probably a little bit north of, oh my God, what is it north of? Uh, north of Bangkok, right? So you got Don Mung Airport, but the thing is, there is a big problem with Don Mung Airport just because they only have three ticketing agents for about 75 people. Cathay Pacific, they have 12 ticketing agents for probably 50 people. There are no hefty delays. Brilliant. All right. So, of course, go into immigration. When you departure, I like Malaysia's departure much more. Uh, Their arrival is terrible. Now, Hong Kong's arrival isn't too bad because they have about 15 immigration officers. In Malaysia, you only have two for like 75 people. So that's another big problem. But 
again, when you leave the country, it's very quick, very, I mean, you just hurry up, they stamp a couple things, and then you're out. Boom. Man, efficiency, okay? Security, brilliant. No long lines. I mean, again, I think Hong Kong knows exactly what they're doing. This is a brilliant RAND airport. Now, let me think about Singapore Airport. Now, Singapore Airport, you don't have the train going straight into the departure hall. I mean, no one probably has that on the face of this planet. Okay, now, yes, if you go to Samoa, if you go to Fiji, if you go to the small, beautiful islands, right when you get to the airport, you're probably walking straight into the departure. But I'm talking about a train joint with vehicles. Train at the bottom, vehicles on the top. Now, yes, when I poom out there in Bangkok, you got the vehicles, but the train isn't connected. It's all the way at the very, very, very bottom. That's what I'm saying, man. I think it's just spectacular what they did here. So, man, if I ever make an island, <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. But, yeah, man, I just, I think I'm just just heralding the, the efficiency of this airport. I think it's just amazing. Um, so grateful, as always. Man, I'm still hungry. I gotta get something to eat. But, um, yeah, again, guys, I think, I'm gonna scale 1 through 10. How am I gonna rate this trip? Well, the thing is, I didn't do much. There was much to see. I saw the cable cars going up. And the cable cars, they were going up into the clouds. If I had done that, oh my goodness. But the thing is, yesterday it was pure sunny. Today it's pure pure cloudy. No, there aren't storms. It's just very, very low clouds. So, man, I kind of kicked myself in the ass. But I don't want to go up in cable cars on a sunny sky. I want to go up when it's a little bit cloudy so we can go through the clouds. That's why I love Hong Kong so much because it looks like Hawaii. The clouds are so low. They're running straight through the hills. They're running straight through the mountains, if you want to call it the mountains. But, um, oh, man, just it's just fantastic. You know what? I'm going to rate it. Well, first of all, transportation 10. You're not beating. There's no city on the planet that's beating out Hong Kong. Okay, if you want to try to, you know, fight me on the whole Japan thing, haven't been there yet, I could rate that when I get there. But, oh, man, I'm rating Hong Kong. Oh, hey, that, there goes my damn plane. Okay, so my plane just got here. Good, it got here about an hour and 20 minutes before. Good, okay, so I'm guessing it just came from... And so, wait, they dump out the passengers at the bottom, or are they going to go through here? No, this is departure. Mm, I don't know how they do these airports. But anyways, I'm really, really happy that my airplane came because, boy, it, it, Bangkok, they, they mess up so many. Ooh, they mess up like crazy. So anyways, let's here we go. Transportation, 10, okay? The train system, 10, okay? The train system, 10. Bus is 10. There are no traffic jams. They're building the... What I saw when I was coming out here, remarkable, okay? You're not beating Hong Kong in terms of transportation, all right? Now, what I could have done, it could have been a 10, but I didn't do much. So I'm going to rate my personal trip a 7. My hotel, 4, okay? I'm rating it a 4. I'm only giving it a 4 because it was quiet, and because my room was really nice and quaint, okay? The water was fantastic, fantastic. the showers were fantastic. It was a little bit loud on the main road, but it didn't really bother me while I was sleeping. That's about it. Um, another couple of places. What were the other uh, two places? Um, oh, man. Yeah, I forgot. Oh, the people, of course, immigration and everything. When I first landed, it was a pure disaster. I've already told you guys that. But, um, I mean, just in general... It was good. Could have been better. It could have been better, but I didn't make it better. And because I didn't make it better, eh, I'm gonna give it about a six and a half, seven. Now I could have made it a nine, and that's my fault. Okay, because I completely underestimated the Hong Kong dollar. <laughs> so guys, I'm gonna give you a thing right here: Hong Kong, Japan, Australia, Singapore, England. Anywhere in the Middle East, you need to take double on the days you're there. So instead of having $100 per U.S., you know, per day, you got to have $200 or at least $150 on those days. I underestimated it. And the thing is, I was very, of course, diligent with my money. And then, of course, when I have all, all the money I have right now, I'm like, oh, well, I could have done more. But I kind of kicked myself in the ass. But guys, don't underestimate the dollar when you come out here. Please don't. Bring extra. So if you're staying here for four days, man, 100 U.S. dollar per day, that ain't cutting it, okay? You needs to bring you about 150 per day, which will equate to 600 U.S. dollars for four days just to be safe and always have credit cards or whatever, worst-case scenario type of money. Ooh, man, I've been preaching a lot. Oh, look at 
the, the, the flight attendants. You know what I love so much, man? The flight attendants for Cathay Pacific. Very conservative uniforms. Very long. Uh, man, I think it's amazing. And I think, dude, I think they're just so adorable. But anyways, um... What? Yeah, man. I'm just going to rate it that. And you know what? I don't know what's going to happen going forward in terms of, you know, the next place I have to go. If the whole visa thing doesn't go through in the allotted time, I mean, I'm probably going to be able to extend it 30 days out there in Bangkok. Maybe. I mean, if I want to or else I could take another trip. <laughs> but if I take one more trip, man, I can't take any more until December. I've been flying too much. I mean, it is great. Don't get me wrong. And flying Cathay Pacific, perfect, you know, uh... But, man, every month, that's just a little bit wild. Unless they're going on a business trip or something like that. So, anyways, guys, with that being said, wonderful trip. Um, I'm going to give it a 7. I'm going to give it a solid, a very, very solid 7. I'm only, I'm not giving it more because, well, my hotel kind of sucked. And that was over $100 per night. And I didn't do anything. I mean, if I would have done something, this trip could have turned out to a 9, 9.2, 9.25. It really could have. And I'm not going to just factor in the hotel that much because, well, it wasn't like they were just being assholes. I mean, they just sucked at service. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, I'm grateful for the process. There is going to be a lot more videos coming up. Uh, I saw a bunch of views, of course, on my YouTube with in terms of, you know, Hong Kong and being in Hong Kong. People commenting. So, I'm going to start doing videos a hell of a lot more, especially in Lao. Lao, I should have done a lot more out there. But I didn't. But you know what? It's all good. It's a learning experience. So, guys, with that being said, this is a podcast in terms of travel. We're getting back to Tiffany. Today's Friday. So, Tiffany Okafor. She is a best-selling author. She's coming on board my podcast interview tomorrow. Following day, we're going to hurry up and top off Lewis Ho's books. And we should be into Napoleon Hill on Monday. So, guys, stay tuned. Oh, a little cute girls here. Anyways, guys, stay tuned for that. Uh, and as always, this is your host, Arsenio as usual, over and out.